Welcome to another Genus Brewing Chopped Brewing Challenge. We've done two of these so far, and we're kind of working on them and getting them a little bit more streamlined. So today we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head chopped brewing challenge where we don't know what the mystery ingredients are just yet. But luckily, Tim has got some for us. On this episode today, we are going to be using the same ingredients unlike what we did last time. That way it will give you guys a better kind of side-by-side -side comparison to see who really is the better brewer. True head-to-head -head battle. Now, before we go any further, let's go ahead and run down the rules of the ingredients that need to be picked. Number one, it's gotta be edible. Yeah, no tires. Mm -hmm. Number two, you can't have salt that exceeds 15 grams per what you, you would use for a five gallon batch. So no heavy salts. Yeah, no potato chips or pretzels. Uh, along with the potato chips, there's also nothing with a lot of oil content. Oil content will stop fermentation, which is not good. Yeah, no motor oil. Wait, motor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And last but not least, no preservatives that will also inhibit fermentation. Because otherwise you don't have beer. Yeah, you, you gotta be able to make beer. So let's go right into our mystery ingredients, which Tim has so nicely wrapped up for us. All right, first of all, we have- Something that's chilled. A towel? <laughs> That was wrapping. I don't think this is edible. Jalapenos. Oh, some peppers. Okay. All right. All right. So we got some. Uh, looks like jalapeno peppers. What else we got? I see a can. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Green chili enchilada sauce. Jesus, Tim. It's trying to kill us. And avocados. Avocados. All right. More like avocado nose. Oh, uh, yo. Uh, we've actually been excited to try some avocados ever since it was suggested in a video. So and now's tortillas. our chance. And tortillas. So he basically brought us Mexican breakfast. I was like, he brought us lunch. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. So let's uh, take a little time figuring out what we're going to do, and then we'll go ahead and hit it with uh, getting our grains together. Boom. All right, so we've spent uh, maybe four or five minutes thinking about what we're going to do. Uh, I think we both have kind of an idea, but a lot of this is going to be played on the fly. So let's go ahead and grab those grains like I said before and then we'll let you guys know what we're doing as we do it. Follow me to the upstairs. We gotta mill some grains up. <laughs> all right, let's grab all of our dirty bins here. So my plan of attack for the grains is I'm going to be making up a grain bill that's going to be reminiscent of a sort of Cascadian Dark Ale or Black IPA. Um, I feel like uh, the peppers are really going to be the star of this beer, so I want to make something that's going to be dark and robust and have that body to really hold up to them, but really let them shine through at the same time. Damn it, you're thinking along similar lines as me. Ha! I win. <laughs> I, I'm a little different though. Um, Base malt, I'm just gonna use some good old two row. I'm gonna get plenty of other flavors from the specialty malt I'll throw in here. Two, I'm gonna go about 12 pounds of two row in here. Next thing I'm gonna go with is a dark crystal malt. I feel like those definitely add some nice character, so probably a crystal 120. Bam! Not gonna overdo it, about six ounces is all we need. So that's gonna give us a little bit of that fruity character, but next we gotta darken it up. And for that, I'm gonna use some kind of a debittered malt. Um, I'm probably thinking midnight wheat. Let's go midnight wheat, it's right here. Bam, midnight wheat. A Little bit of this goes a long way. Aww. So for midnight wheat, I'm only gonna put four ounces in here. That's gonna give me plenty of color. That's gonna turn this beer probably a really dark brown. So those are gonna be all of my barley grains, and the last I'm going to use is a pound of flaked oats. That's really gonna kinda help build up that body, build up that chewiness, and uh, give me that beer that I'm looking for. Let's get these guys milled. Good old rolled oats. Also a delicious breakfast. All right, you're probably wondering what I'm trying to open right now. This is a uh, rice hole, so I'm just gonna do a smallish scoop of them for safe measure. It's gonna keep me from getting stuck mashed. Scoop like that, about probably six ounces. Bam, I'm gonna throw those guys right in with my flaked oats, and uh, that's my grain bill. Boom, throw those guys right down there. Peter, is it your turn? It's my turn. Woo! Hand off. Let's go. 
Okay, so what I'm thinking is, back when I used to think Elysian was cool, they actually made this 12 Beers of the Apocalypse series, which I really enjoyed, and one of the beers in that was a uh, Chipotle Green Chili Stout. So I'm gonna try to do something similar to that, but I also know that there's white corn in the tortillas, so I'm gonna try to lean into that and do somewhere between maybe a Stout and a Kentucky Common. That's where my head's at right now. So I'm actually gonna do a split between Heidelberg and then a more flavorful malt, like maybe ESB malt from uh, Gambrinus. So, let's start with some of the Heidelberg malt. I got five pounds of that, five pounds of the ESB malt, and then I just gotta build some specialty malt flavor around that. I know I'm aiming for somewhere between 14 and 15 pounds total, because uh, I want this to be a little bit on the higher alcohol side. So, But some of that also has to take into account the corn, because if I'm gonna mash those corn tortillas in, I have about a pound of those. So, probably around 14 pounds is what I'm going for here, just with the grains that I'm weighing out. Some aromatic malts to build a, uh, kind of a toasty middle, about three quarters of a pound of that. Some Caravian for a touch of crystal character, but not enough that it's gonna be really, uh, uh, really noticeably crystal. It's kind of halfway between a crystal and a biscuit malt. Maybe three quarters of a pound of that. I'm hoping I have a half pound of Special X before I have to open up a new bag. And it looks like I do. So that Special X is really gonna pop that red color and uh, build out those mid-tones a little bit. Now I can start on some dark malts. So we got chocolate malts. I'm gonna go kind of aggressive on chocolate. It's gonna go three quarters of a pound. Just like Logan, I'm gonna find some debatered malts too so we can really darken that color uh, but not get overly aggressive because we want it to be a light enough base that those chilies will still shine through. We're gonna go about a half pound of Crawford 3, so this is gonna be dark. Perfect. Where's our corn? I know where your corn is, Peter. And one last thing just to kind of emphasize that corniness that's gonna be in the tortilla, I'm actually gonna supplement with a little bit of yellow corn too. I'll do three quarters of a pound here, if I can get this turned on. Uh, and that'll bring my total weight without the tortillas up to 14 pounds. Not including rice rolls. And just like Logan, in these vertical systems of brewing, uh, rice rolls are always a good idea. Yeah, that's good. All right, we're all set. We just gotta start figuring out the strategy for the rest of the ingredients. I am heating up maybe only a half gallon of water in the mash and boil right now. Don't have nothing in it. So I am planning on doing a sort of pseudo decoction where I'm going to dice up these peppers, dice up my tortillas, throw them in with about a pound of my grains and uh, get that to ideally a nice simmer, but Using the mash and boil, I only have 1,500 watts or 500,000 watts. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do something crazy. On second thought, let's start with fire. Ooh, oh, there we go. So normally you're going to take the skin off of these after you char them if you're going to eat them like a normal pepper, but I'm actually going to leave it on there and uh, hope that it adds just a little bit more of that smokiness, a little bit more of that charred burnt flavor to the beer. With that said, I am going to try to probably pull the seeds out of these just so we don't get too crazy with the spiciness. Now I'm gonna hack these guys up um, with my super, super effective knife here. Um, no, honestly, I'm just trying to pull some of these seeds out so they don't get too terribly spicy. Um, woo, I can smell them from here, though. Me too, they smell good. Still smell really fresh. Just cutting up the last little bits of these. Um, I didn't do a very good job splitting my seeds out, so probably gonna be a pretty spicy beer as they're like literally sitting on my tortillas. I really wanted to separate those more, but you know, sometimes you just gotta work what you got. That's an attractive shot. Stop staring at my crotchy. These do smell really good right now. Bam. Next step, I got water that's actually boiling over here. Grab some handfuls of my grains. Gonna dump these guys straight into some boiling water.
Perfect, that looks pretty good. And then I got this hot mess. I really hope I don't scorch the living daylights out of this. Probably will, we'll see. Break it, did you take the brand new one? Yes I did. You dick. <laughs> so this is pretty thin actually, I'm gonna even thicken that up a bit more. Another couple handfuls of grains. Beautiful. Now that is what I'm going for. Nice, thick, mashy mash. I'm just gonna keep stirring this, kinda let this simmer, and uh, I'm gonna let Peter get mashed in. In the meantime, I'm gonna cook this down to a uh, hot yumminess. All right, so I've got my water heated up in the mash and boil. It's right at about 160, 162. Hopefully I'm gonna get a mash in temperature right around 150. Um, the avocados are gonna go in there. Hopefully the enzymes and the grains themselves help pull out any fats that are in the avocados. Uh, and then I'm gonna throw the corn in there too because that's a great source of sugar and hopefully a little bit of that corny sweetness that you can get. So I got a pound and a half of the corn tortillas that I'm gonna throw in. The jalapenos I'm actually gonna take care of a little bit later towards the end of the boil. Uh, and then I think that, uh, that chili stuff I might have to use in secondary so we might not see that today. Uh, but let's go ahead and get mashed in. I've got two avocados ripening in the microwave just because uh, these are super the opposite of that. So hopefully uh, on a low heat for a little bit of time I can uh, change, change my fate a little bit. Let's see if we can get mashed in right at that 150 degree range. With as many dark grains as I have, we should notice pretty early on that this will be a very deep color. I get some of the grains in there with those right off the bat. Don't spill off the side. Meanwhile, wah, wah, wah. Scorchy scorch. So this is definitely very full and towards the capacity of the mash and boil. Um, I'm hoping that adding those rice holes that we did will help prevent getting stuck sparge or anything like that. But it is a risk when you're doing a mash this big in one of these vertical systems. So our avocados were super, super unripe, like I said before. So I had to do a little bit of finagling to kind of speed ripen them a little bit and make them a little bit more usable. Uh, so I popped them on a low setting in the microwave for a while. Now I'm gonna take this uh, little skin of the pit off, hopefully reduce some bitterness, and then I'm gonna get these put in. Sad, sad day. I scorched. I kind of half expected it, but it was doing so well until I had to stop stirring and record Peter, and then the alarm went off and everybody knew what happened immediately. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump this just on top of my dry grains for now. Just, I can't really think of a better spot to put it because um, it's all gonna get mashed in anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and dump it out. It smells amazing, though I do have to add. Um, I don't think the fact that it got scorched a little bit hurt it whatsoever. I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in with the other grains. Why does it always do this to me? There you go. Oh, oh, easy, easy, there we go. My mash is gonna be very full like Pedro's. Rice holes, rice holes, rice holes and stuff and stuff. Wanna know what I think about avocados? They suck. There, it's my mash. I'm gonna go do something more important in life. <laughs> like trip over the propane tank? Yeah. Well, that's the last of my sparge water. Um, yeah, we're gonna get this puppy up to a boil. As you can see through the steam, I have just gotten past my hot break. I'm going to boil this down for a typical one hour boil. As my bittering addition, I have one ounce of Pato's as 18% alpha, so should give me a good kick. After that, I have a 10 minute hop addition of Pato and Summit hops. Summit's one of my favorites. And then I have a flame out edition of Pato, Summit, and Comet. I think the combination of all these hops are really gonna push a little bit of more earthiness through, a little bit more herbal quality. Um, that'll actually just back up that natural pepper character that I really hope comes through in this beer. Boom, start my timer. Bam, boil's all done. Mmm, throwing those hop goodiness. Nah, we're gonna uh, start cooling this puppy down. Well, you know, sometimes we all have to enter uncharted territories and do something a little scary, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out now.
wasn't that hard, was it? You know, it was easier than I thought. Uh, I'm about done with my sparge water now, and I'm not going to be throwing in my jalapenos till the end of the boil, but I'm going to go ahead and get them prepped ahead of time just so I can make sure they're doing what I want them to do. So all I'm going to do for now, I'm just going to take them, cut the ends off, cut them in half, and then I'll pop them on a little griddle that I got heating up over here. Uh, I'll worry about getting the seeds on actually after they're cooked. So yeah, while Logan was sitting right here talking about his boil plan, because his beer is at a boil, he failed to look just one step this way at what was going on behind him while I was out there helping a customer. And uh, we made a mess. So, got to deal with that. But we're at a boil, and uh, all we got to do now is wait until the end of the boil, which I'm just going to go down to like five and a half gallons, and then we're going to toss in all them peps. And then we're gonna chill it down. It's been about two and a half hours so far this boiling. It's definitely reducing down super nicely. So this is gonna be a really big, rich, thick beer. Uh, Logan added in a half ounce of Magnum about uh, 45 minutes ago uh, when I wasn't here because I had to go do something else. Um, now That's I'm gonna heat things. Hopefully. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, my last edition. This is gonna be a five minute edition of Columbus, Saz, and Chinook. And at the same time, I'm going to uh, uh, wait a little bit and then kill my heat and then add all my de-stemmed peppers, which I still have to do. So this is going in now. And my peppers are going in in five minutes when I get to start cooling down. All right, so my hops went in about five minutes ago. So now we're at the, the very, very end of the boil. I'm gonna go ahead and get my chiller in this, uh, in the mash and boil. And then I'm gonna add my jalapenos for a couple minutes before letting it cool down. Uh, then we just gotta get it into the fermenter and uh, get, it, get it pitched. Logan left me with a dirty chiller, by the way, so I had to go run and clean it off real quick. I think he's trying to sabotage me. I am gonna throw these jalapenos in a bag just because I want to make sure the cleanup's good and I don't want the jalapenos clogging up the pump or anything like that. They're de-seeded, they got a nice char, a medium amount of floppiness, but overall they've got a good amount, a good balance between still having some clean vegetal matter and having a little bit of that char on the outside. Still got a little bit of heat to them too, so hopefully that ends up in the final beer. All right, give those a good soak and then we'll just get chilling. Oh, you're probably wondering about that uh, green chili sauce thing that we have to use. That I'm probably gonna add in a, another stage during fermentation. We'll show you in a bit. So for this beer, I'm actually gonna be using Imperial's Independence. It's a strong fermenter, number one, uh, which is good because that beer came out at 1080, uh, maybe 1081. Uh, it's fairly neutral because I want to let the ingredients shine, but it does have a subtle fruitiness that'll really push forward some of the natural flavors of this stout that we're using. I just take, tasted a sample of the gravity, and so far I get a little bit of that smoky charness from the peppers and a little bit of heat, but I don't get much else. So it'll be fun to see what happens when we get all the ingredients in there and uh, when it's all the way fermented out. We're here on to the next step now. We are ready to keg because our beer is pretty much fermented now. It's all set, ready to go, tasting super yummy, but uh, I have at least one more ingredient that needs to get into my beer. And Logan, you have two ingredients that need to go into yours. Yeah, I actually have to put the avocados in. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, I'm not 100% that we're gonna be able to taste the avocados in mine, uh, but that's not the trickiest ingredient. The tricky, tr trickiest ingredient, I think, is this green chili enchilada sauce. Um, so we're gonna do a little bit of experimentation here, a little bit of testing to see what we think, but I do have an idea, and that involves doing some sort of tincture to separate out solids and I don't think there's any fats in there but it separates out solids from um, everything else in there and hopefully get a nice flavorful thing that I can add to the beer. Basically we are both going to be doing tinctures today and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and jump out of the shot and let Peter do his first and then I'm gonna kinda do mine afterwards. All right, so I'm actually not sure what to expect out of what's gonna be in this can. So I have a couple things set up. I'm gonna do a little tester to see if I can already separate out some solids from any liquid in there. Um, again, I'm kind of just coming prepared with everything that I think might happen to make sure that when I get this tincture started, I'm doing it as educatedly as possible. And it smells very peppery and slightly vinegary. Okay, I'm gonna put that off to the side. I'm gonna try to see if I can separate out any, any solids in there so that I can minimize the sauciness going into the beer. I don't know if there'll be a ton of solids Sexy. to separate out. Mm, that is pungent. There is some solids in here, and I see it looks like there's some oil in there too. So it's definitely gonna be a good idea to do a tincture, because what a tincture will do is it'll actually separate out the oil. 
All right, I don't think I'm getting a ton of separation, so let's go ahead and move that over to there. Uh, and if you look really closely, you can actually see some little oil droplets. Oh yeah. So those are gonna be bad for business. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and basically try to separate them out using alcohol. So I'm gonna pour this into a little mason jar here. And I do think I'll need the whole thing to be able to uh, get the flavor that I want out of that chili. So my goal is to use a little bit of tequila. A little bit? A little bit of tequila. <laughs> and a little bit of mezcal for a little bit of smokiness, but also to try to get enough solvent that we're gonna really have some, you can already see it separating out a little bit, but we're trying to separate out those fats from any other thing that we're gonna be throwing in there. Toss my lid on. Give it a shake. After I shake it up a little bit, we're gonna let it separate out and I'm just gonna use the layer of alcohol to go into the beer. All right, let's get Peter's uh, funkiness out of the way. Um, I just double checked the ingredients on here and it does have soybean oil, which is why we saw all that floating. So same deal, just a uh, general tincture with it. So have some neutral spirit in front of me and uh, I'm not even gonna bother straining. I'm just gonna dump some of this in here. Ooh, hopefully without making a mess. Let's, let's use a bigger jar to start with. Um, I'm only gonna use about a quarter of the can too. Get that in there. Yeah, I really don't want to use too much of that can because I am worried about all that oil being in there. It's like the fifth ingredient on the list. So, um, also, I have my avocados that are finally uh, like way overripe now because, well, it's been a couple weeks. So we'll see how these look. They're probably not going to look very nice, but got to use them either way, right? So I'm actually just going to squeeze these guys right in here. So this is the same idea behind the avocado mixture: is that the avocados are going to have some fats, they're going to have some oils that are really just gonna dissolve better in alcohol than water because of polarity bits. So we'll see how much flavor we get from that. I'm actually gonna let mine soak a little bit longer. Um, Peter's probably gonna put his in today, but I'm actually gonna let mine go for a couple of days before I add it. I'm just hoping the, that the avocado is gonna break down in there just a little bit more and uh, hopefully extract as much of that avocado yumminess as possible, which is something I really don't know, so. Yeah, fun facts. We'll see you uh, once uh, this gets kegged up and we can hopefully find some impartial tasters to determine who won. All right, so we told you that the green chili Wachabagal is gonna be a little bit oily and so we needed a strategy to separate out all the green chili flavor and leave behind the oil. We did that with tincture and as you can see, we did get separation. So all that ring around there is the oils in there. Uh, and then that middle chunk, that's gonna be what we're gonna want. We're gonna want the vodka slash tequila slash mezcal infused flavor and leave all the gunkiness behind. Okay, so the trick to this is gonna be hopefully using this syringe to get all that good stuff without disturbing the layers of gunk and the layers of oil. Oh, I can smell it. It doesn't smell half bad, actually. You're gonna squirt it into your fermenter and the cake. 10 mils so far looks pretty good. And then I'm hoping... Oh, I see your plan now. That that's just the right size. Yeah, hey, tricky, that'll tricky. work. That'll work. And then as soon as I just start for, uh, transferring, I can plug this onto the dip tube there and we should be good to go. Good to go. Coolio, Pachulio. 10 out of 1020. Yeah, it's a big beer. It's a big beer. It's good. That is pleasant. Hey, there we went. Look at that beautiful color.
So both of these beers tasted great going into the kegs. That said, both these beers went into kegs before adding probably the most difficult ingredient to add, which was the green chili enchilada sauce. So they have been enchiladaed since then, and now we get to jump in and taste them. And uh, let's let you guys do that first, because I already know which one's which, and uh, uh... see which one you like best. We should not have had Tim buy ingredients for us on Taco Tuesday. Mm. <laughs> they were so good though. I definitely got extras for tacos. <laughs> okay, the ingredients wait. that were, we needed to brew with were avocados, jalapenos, okay. white corn tortillas, and green chili enchilada sauce from a can. It presents itself almost as being very hoppy, but I think it's that green uh, vegetable notes that's going in perceiving hoppiness, but actually it's the peppers and enchilada sauce. That's actually still got a lot of good going on. I really enjoy that beer. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try to not say too much, but I totally agree with the hoppiness. Totally agree with getting some sort of a chili component. Um, yeah. yeah, I can get some spice, but it's like very, very subtle. I don't. Not really. very if I didn't subtle, know it was yeah. there, I wouldn't get it. it if it you is. told, if you, if I did not know the pepper quality and uh, said that this was a red IPA or something to that effect, I'd be like, yeah, I could see that. I would definitely drink this. The more I'm drinking it, and the more that hoppiness is turning into green pepper vegetable. Yeah, but it's, it's opening up a little bit. That's what mad. I get from the beginning. Like I'm not getting a really strong hot burst, like I guess mm -hmm. that I'm used to on like an IPA, but right. Well, it's it, very leafy, and I, I think it's an enchilada sauce that's coming through. But this is still really good. Really good caramel notes. Yeah. Really good pepper. I wish there was some more heat. Um, I, if this is a spicy but, beer, like this would be way better. This, this. Yeah, but that said, it is a really good beer. This is a beer yes. I'll drink. Like great beer. All right. All right. Let's Number move two. on to the Number two. stout looking beer. It smells stouty. Smells stouty. The aftertaste on that is delightful. I'm trying not to say too much, but I oh. do. I really love this beer. This is delicious. Somebody could make an entire career off of a beer exactly like this. I taste. I don't know. I think I taste a lot. You taste the, really uh, a lot here. It was here I really taste like just very stouty. I, I don't know if it's chocolate or coffee. I get chocolate really, notes out there yeah. for sure. Yeah, very chocolatey. A but I do get chipotle. Like, yeah, the mole is the biggest part that yeah. I get. Like that uh, mole is like that underlying tone that like makes it interesting and makes it like, to me, it makes it good. But it adds an extra component to this beer that yeah. is actually it's difficult to pull out. I think the enchilada sauce in this is a lot more difficult to pull out and realize what it's doing right. than in the other beer. Yeah. But I don't think this would be good as good without the enchilada sauce. It adds some real body to it. It adds some saltiness. Which I think, I think yeah, really I was going to mention the saltiness. Out. I think the saltiness itself, actually, yeah. just as just the salt by itself as an ingredient, I think rounds out the malt complexity of this and like kind of pushes it forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. And having that um, meaty fullness that uh, tomatillos yeah. are known to give, mm -hmm. I think really helps the body and structure of this beer. It would not be the same without the enchilada sauce. Would you be able to drink this beer and say, oh yeah, there's enchilada sauce in it? Probably, Probably not. not. Not a chance. But you will <laughs> miss it if it is gone. I don't get any spice. I don't get like the spice. Um, That's the thing that I'm missing is actual yeah. physical spice, like spice. that capsaicin spice. Yeah. Mm. If, but I don't really want it in this one. Right. In, in, in this one, I definitely want it. That I one think, is a spicy beer. I think, I think this it was be. spicy. This, yeah. Yeah. This I, would be an amazing. But I, I'm with you on that. I think with this, the chocolate, like I don't really want to spice with my chocolate. Both phenomenal beers. Both really good. I have to say, um, this is kind of what I hoped. While buying these ingredients, I definitely had an image in my mind of what the beer was going to come out like. Um, they surpassed that. The, these are both really good beers. Again, we're all kind of ingredients in there. It could have a little bit more spiciness. We did use fresh jalapenos in that, and you never know what you're going to get yeah. off a fresh yeah. jalapeno, so that's okay. Let's vote number one on what is the best overall beer, and then let's vote number two on what is the best representation of the set of ingredients that we had. White corn tortillas, uh, jalapenos, green chili enchilada sauce, and avocados. Overall best beer, I got to go with the stout. I'm in ingredients with that. This would be my favorite, surprisingly close second. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm in agreement. I think the uh, this is my favorite beer. This is a beer that I, without any of those ingredient sets, I would love to drink yeah. this beer. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, it's a winner in terms of uh, beer quality goes. It's a beer that I'd be proud to have on. Yeah. Uh, now let's go on to which yeah. beer is the best representation of the overall ingredients. I mean, I don't even think this is a, a choice. I mean, this one literally tastes like the ingredients. You got all the pepper it, on that one. I, that's the only thing. I want more spice in this, and this mm -hmm. would literally be exactly what you tell me. Be like, yep, that's what's in this beer. This is amazing. 
for the ingredients, I think that one wins. If you're going to taste the ingredients out of it, I do have to give it to Logan on that yep. because the, they are more out of balance and you can better perceive the individual flavors out of it. If this just had some jalapeno it, spice kick, yeah, that would, would be the pepper would, beer. Oh, man, that yeah. would be good. Yeah, yeah, that would be an amazing beer. pepper yeah. beer. Of the ingredients and tasting them out of there, I, I got to give it to Logan on that. <laughs> For the better balance of ingredients, that is that is going to Peter Stout. So uh, to wrap up kind of my overall perceptions, I'm super happy with Logan's, how Logan's turned out. Um, and I do wish we had that same kind of kick at the spiciness yeah. at the end. Mm -hmm. Logan's actually was meant to be a dark IPA, a darker IPA. He designed it as a dark IPA, okay. kind of like a, a CDA without all the roastiness because he wanted to kind of play off the jalapenos to give mm -hmm. kind of that same quality. He, I think yeah. he was hoping to char those jalapenos a little bit more. more. Um, but there is a lot of hops in there as well. And yeah. he wanted those okay. hops to kind of play with the enchilada feel of everything. Knowing that that was set up to be an IPA, that makes a whole lot more it's sense. It's definitely to got me. a lot, yeah, a good amount of hops to it. And yeah. so uh, I knew that on going into it. I think that it turned out really well. It tasted like a good red IPA going into the kegs. Logan's represents the ingredients a little bit and it is stronger. Uh, I think my beer turned out to be a little bit better. <laughs> both of them are surprisingly good. I would be happy to have both of these on, uh, on tap in the tap house, which we will, by the way, if you want to try these be in Spokane, just move here if you're not in Spokane already. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, absolutely do follow Damon on social media. We'll link all that below and we'll see you next time. Will it be your stuff? Ha 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 ha. Cheers. Dude, we're gonna walk in and be like. That didn't happen. That's hot. Fun facts. Why is everything hot? Nothing happened. It's all good so far. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Holds, holds air.